asymptote see a line coming out of it. So how do we figure it out? We figure it out by using polynomial division. So x cubed minus 5x, and notice that's 5x to the 1, not 5x squared, so that's going to have a slight effect when we're doing our division. Negative 4x to the 4th plus 7x cubed plus 23x squared minus 43x plus 5. Great. x cubed, how many times does it go into negative 4x to the fourth? It's going to go in negative 4x times, because negative 4x times x cubed gets us negative 4x to the fourth, right? Negative 4x times negative 5x gets us 20x squared, but the next thing we have is 7x cubed. So that's not going to go on the 7x cubed, it's going to go on the 23x squared column. So negative 4x times negative 5x, but gets us 20x squared, so it's 20x squared lines up there and it's positive. So at this point we subtract by this amount, so we distribute our negative, that becomes positive, that becomes negative, so negative 4x to the fourth plus 4x to the fourth becomes zero, what it should be when we're doing polynomial division, the first part should always cancel to zero. 23x squared minus 20x squared gets us positive 3x squared. Next step, we bring down the other things that we'll wind up using, so we bring down the 7x cubed, we bring down the minus 43x, so how many times does x cubed go into 7x cubed? It will go in 7 times. 7 times x cubed gets us 7x cubed. 7 on negative 5x gets us negative 35x. We subtract by this amount. So distribute our negative. It becomes positive. So 7x cubed minus 7x cubed gets us 0. Negative 43x plus 35x gets us negative 8x. Bring down 3x squared. Bring down 5. We've got 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. At this point, can x cubed go into 3x squared? No. x cubed has a larger degree than 3x squared, so we are left with a remainder of 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. So we're left with that remainder. So at this point, we know that our original function, f of x, through division, we've just shown that it's the same thing as negative 4x plus 7 plus the remainder, 3x squared, minus 8x plus 5 divided by our original denominator x cubed minus 5x. So our answer for what our slant asymptote will wind up being is going to be the part in the front, negative 4x plus 7. That's our slant asymptote. Now we can also check our work at this point by just making sure that if we combine these, we get back to our original function. So let's put them over a common denominator. We have negative 4x plus 7 times x cubed minus 5x over x cubed minus 5x. So what will that wind up being? This is just the same thing here. So negative 4x times x cubed gets us negative 4x to the fourth. Negative 4x minus 5x gets us positive 20x, plus 7 times x cubed gets us 7x cubed, 7 times negative 5x gets us minus 35x, all over x cubed minus 5x, so x cubed minus 5x, and we can add on our thing from our other one, because they're now on common denominator, plus 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. So what's that wind up becoming? We're starting to run out of space, so I'll do this vertically. So we have negative 4x to the fourth right here, so negative 4x to the fourth. Great, that checks out. Uh, 20, so next x cubed, 7x cubed, we have no other x cubed, so plus 7x cubed, that checks out. 3x squared, any other x squares, oh, whoops, accidentally didn't write the squared, negative 4x times negative 5x became positive 20x squared, so we've got positive 3x squared, positive 20x squared becomes plus 20x squared. Hey, that checks out. Minus 35x, minus 8x, that becomes minus 43x. That checks out. And then plus 5, plus 5, and that checks out because this whole thing is still over that denominator of x cubed minus 5x. So we've got the exact same thing that we started with. So what we just did checks out. So we know for sure negative 4x plus 7 is good. It's definitely our answer. All right, we'll see you next time when we talk about graphing uh, rational functions in general, being able to use these vertical and horizontal asymptotes together to be able to quickly make the uh, graphs to these kinds of functions. All right, see you at educator.com later. Bye.